The Irish National Stud, birthplace of racing legends such as Minoru, Sun Chariot, and more recently Sea the Stars, has the richest of histories. But for CEO John Osborne, son of former stud manager Michael, the challenge is to keep the operation moving forward in an ever-changing market. The stallion market is going through an interesting phase. It's always interesting, but particularly right now. I mean, the horses which had first two-year-old runners in 2011 was the last of the boom crops of intake. I mean, we had, I would have counted 22, perhaps 25 horses last, this time last year, which you could say were legitimate contenders for success in, in the racing calendar year that was about to begin. And it was a very good, solid, broad-based bunch of horses. We had two of them. Since that year, the intake year on year has fallen. And the intake of new stallions in 2012 is the lowest I can ever remember between the two islands. And it was an unusual year insofar as you would expect that because a year in which the Mac Toombs collectively retired one horse and Coolmore in its entirety managed to find three horses, one of which it had to acquire as a horse in training, that there must be other horses out there to um, um, make a case for, but in fact we found that our even our tracking list was very small in 2011. So it may have been a combination of factors. One was a, a reduction in confidence, but also a reduction in buying opportunities as well, which is may, hopefully we'll have but more opportunities in 2012. But again, another factor: stallion values have come down in in so far as everything else has come down, which makes the attraction of let's say a middle ranking colt to race elsewhere, whether it's in Hong Kong or Dubai or Australia or wherever. And so a horse who's maybe had a modicum of group three form as a two year old and might in the past have climbed the ranks to where he found a place that stood historically. Today, he may be hoovered up to race abroad rather than uh, build a CV entitling him to a place that stood in a place like this. So we may be in, in a, in the shadow of another byproduct of our less than satisfactory prize money structure sure, and racing structure sure. in these islands again, you know. There are six stallions standing at the stud in 2012, headed by multiple Group 1 sire Invincible Spirit. On the track, his hallmark was precocity and speed. He was a Group 1 winner over six furlongs, but he was also a very smart two-year-old, rated over 111 by time form. And you can see by him, the biggest attribute of his physique is the power through his hips and the swagger of a walk that he has. And John, physically, what type of mare do you think best suits him? Is it well, very again, much as, a like Well, again, as one of our big competing stallion enterprise said, he's one of the easiest horses to mate because physically he's medium-sized, he's, he's well-conformed and presents very few complications. So basically, you can cross him with anything. And here John is Big Bad Bob, and um, he's obviously caught many people's eye because he started off at a low level, is showing signs. He, he was he trained by John mares. Dunlop for Mrs. Christina Patino, who raised him and then retired him as a private stallion where he stood in Island Moor, stood in County Limerick and covered Mrs. Patino's own mares. And um, she's had a lot of success with them. She has a lot of horses in training by him this year to come, including Bible Belt, who was second to Dancing Rain in, in the Kipco. Um, Phillies race. He's doing something unusual in that, like his, he had the first two-year-old winner in Dundalk um, over five furlongs in April and then he did that two seasons in a row having a five furlong Dundalk two-year-old winner. So he's, it, there's a lot of speed coming into the equation from somewhere and that's the hallmark of the great stallions. Now we're seeing a lovely range, John, of the different physical types of stallions you have here. This is Art Kana Serp. He looks quite a neat, very well-made horse. Yeah, our connoisseur was a very fast, precocious two-year-old. He made his debut in April and had and won his second race by the end of April because he went to Newmarket for the Craven meeting. And then he won the Coventry at Royal Ascot. 
So, I mean, sprinting and precocity were his forte. But he did something remarkable at three as well. He came back and he won a group one sprint against older horses, which is a feat rarely achieved by three-year-old sprinters. Indeed, yeah. So he has, you know, the attributes of the great sprinters, uh, and as well as that, he has a beautiful, well-made confirmation. Yeah. Um, he's a very well-balanced horse. He's, he's got great power behind the saddle. He's got a very good angle to his shoulder. He's a very short shin, which means that confirmationally his offspring are likely to be uncomplicated. And uh, we would expect him to get plenty of sharp two-year-olds himself. This is uh, Jeremy, who's a son of Daniel Dancer. He was bought as a foal in Kentucky for $375,000. So he's been a handsome devil all his life. Uh, he's out of an Arazi mare who is a half-sister to Deep Impact, who's the champion sire in Japan at the moment. And Jeremy had his first runners in 2011. He's, he's done well from uh, what we've seen to date. And the most interesting thing, or most gratifying thing, is that at the yearling sales 2011, many of the trainers who have got stock by him were prepared to invest in him again, and even at a higher level than they had done previously. So they believe in him, we believe in him. This is Lord Shanikil, who's by Spitestown, who may be familiar with some people through the exploits of Batpack Chinta, who was a winner of Royal Ascot last year. Lord Shanikil himself was Spitestown's first Group 1 winner. We believe that Spitestown is the emerging North American sire, and particularly one that will cross over to be successful in a European context as well. It's the same sire line as Elusive City, who was successful from this base for a few seasons. He's now in France. And uh, obviously it's the same cross as Ifraj, who was the champion first season sire two years ago, sire of Wooten Bassett. Uh, Ifraj was uh, from the elusive quality sire line from a Nuriev mare. And this guy is, a, is the very same cross. Amadeus Wolf is the son of Mozart. He's a group one sprinter at two who went on to win the Duke of York. Um, good sprinter, six furlongs, and uh, his first runners hit the track in 2011. In a very competitive year, he was uh, fifth leading first season sire with 23 individual winners. In May 2011, the eyes of the world were on the national stud when the Queen visited as part of her historic trip to Ireland. I asked John what effect this has had on attracting a wider audience to the stud and the impact on the bloodstock industry as a whole. It was a fantastic day for us here. It was uh, the biggest audience we probably ever had. The Queen's visit to Ireland appeared on the front page in 95 different countries. That was the scale of the audience we had. Uh, we were a central part of that visit. Uh, we were the bloodstock part of the visit which was in the public eye. So it was a huge opportunity for us to showcase the place and to showcase the, the role the industry plays in the, in the leisure of her Majesty, um, and we hope that it was a, a positive for us and for the industry generally. But on a less um, high uh, scale, I mean, that's something that we're trying to do on a daily basis. We have over 100,000 visitors every year who pay to come in to visit and experience a working stud farm and to get up close and personal with the horses that are here. And that is a uh, a responsibility that uh, we see as being central to the role we play in the Irish industry and we would have ambition in that regard. I would love to see our museum be more forward focusing rather than backward focusing insofar as I'd love it to be a reflection of the global nature of the bloodstock industry worldwide. Uh, I'd like our visitors who come from all over the world but particularly from Ireland and, and the UK to walk out thinking you know I don't follow it I don't, I'm not a number one fan, but I understand it better than I used to have. We now have Moscow Flyer living here, who joins Vintage Crop, who's a Melbourne Cup winner who trained locally, and Florida Pearl, who's the champion Irish steeplechaser. But <clears throat> the celebrity racehorses are a key role, part of what we do in terms of showcasing the industry as well and it gives people an exposure to the, the real McCoy. And the, the movie of War Horse demonstrate the, the empathy people have with the actual the living creature. And that's really the essence of what we, we do 
across the board. We can talk about breeding theories and we can talk about statistics, but it really is the effect that the four-legged creature has on the inside of the human looking at him. That's what drives it at, at, at its basic level. The Irish National Stud's global influence on the racing industry is far-reaching, with every year students from around the world graduating from Stud's acclaimed thoroughbred breeding course. But it is for horses that the stud is best known for, and many of the sport's great names have been foaled in Kildare by this man, Jerry Hanratty. We're very proud of all our foals born here. This is my wall of fame where I tried to put um, pictures of some of our horses that went on to win some big races. Um, I see the stars, the most well-known multiple group one horse. He, this is a picture of see the stars when he was a foal. As you can see, he, he was a good big foal. He was 66 kgs which is a pretty decent cold foal now. Some people don't like uh, the later April, May foals, they'd rather have a January, February foal so it'll be bigger when they go to sell it. But it has its advantages that, um, you know, the weather's good, there's better grass, the sun on their back, so sometimes it does work advantage. See, the stars was an April foal, um, good foal, he has it, he had it, everything, he had size, strength, bone, everything. Um, Hurricane Fly at the minute, he's doing very well in the national hunt scene, he was born with us. Um, and we've an exciting horse this year, Born to See, which is a brother of See the Stars. And this is him as a foal. This foal is two days old. He's nursing well. She's a big foal. Very good with that, happy with that foal. And See the Stars was actually born in this stable as well. So hopefully she'll pick up on a, a, a bit of his luck now as well. Be it sculptures or students, foals or stallions, mares, yearlings or the heroes of yesteryear, the Irish National Stud is a symbol of the beautiful cycle of racing and breeding, and also its great but thrilling uncertainty.